Tonight on Bush League Baseball, we're talking about how I cost the Philadelphia Phillies the 1983 World Series. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Bush League Baseball. I'm your host, Bill Guerrero Sr., and along with me is my son, Bill Jr. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Nice to be in here tonight, Dad. Tonight, we're going to be talking about something that's been gnawing at me for over 30 years, and it's how I cost the Philadelphia Phillies the 1983 World Series against the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, I've heard this story a couple times, and uh, I laugh every single time you tell it. I wasn't alive back then, but it's still a good story. I think people need to hear it. Yeah, it's, it's been gnawing at me for years. So the 1983 World Series, game one down in Baltimore, the Phillies win 2-1 to one over the Orioles. So I'm psyched, and I waked up the next morning, and for the hell of it, I called down to, uh, to Baltimore, the old Memorial Stadium, to the ticket office to see if I could get a ticket for the 1983 World Series game two. And by luck would have it, I was able to get two seats lower level. And so I drove down that night with uh, my girlfriend at the time, and we drove down, and of course we took the harassing on the bus, and it was no big deal. Nothing compared to what Philadelphia is at, to uh, visiting fans. But anyway, I uh, take the bus down to the stadium, and I'm all psyched up, uh, hoping for uh, for a Game 2 victory over the Orioles. So once I get there, I'm figuring my seats are going to really, really be horrible, and uh, they cost me 25 hours the day of. And, you know, I couldn't believe it, but I figured I was going to be out in the nosebleed somewhere. So we get down to our seats. We're in the lower level. And if anybody has been to the old Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, they had big uh, columns that used to support the upper level. So we get there and we're behind first base, behind the uh, first base dugout. And all I had to do to, uh, to see the game was lean about a foot to my right. And I couldn't believe the seats. I mean, today, you don't even get tickets day of to a World Series, let alone lower level like that. So the game goes on, and probably the best part about that day was the seats themselves. So the Phillies go on to, to lose 4-1, to one, and you know, I figure they'll take it back to Philadelphia after game two, and it'll go on, and uh, you know we're still going to take the series. Well, that was it. And I'm usually the kiss of death like that. I've been to the World Series uh, twice now. I've been to um, the Stanley Cup Finals twice. I, I've been to the NBA Finals twice. The only thing I haven't been to is the Super Bowl. And uh, I almost went a couple years back when Green Bay was in the Super Bowl. But after my 83 experience, I wasn't taking any chances. So the, the old Memorial Stadium, I've only ever been to it when it was uh, Camden Yards. You know, you got the, the warehouse out in right field. And uh, so what was the old Memorial Stadium like? I haven't even really looked into it that much. Was it easy to park, easy to get around the, the city of Baltimore? No, the stadium was, it was a neat old stadium, but it was, it was really weird where it was at. It was like right in the middle of a neighborhood. Right across the street, I don't know the name of it, um, behind uh, like first base, I believe it was, in, uh, in home plate, there was a school up on the hill. And that night when we had a park, there was a, a, a park down at the river. And you just had a park along the river down there. And we took a, uh, took a bus up to the stadium. And the outfield, it was like an open stadium. It wasn't like the closed-in stadiums like veteran stadiums used to be and Three Rivers, how it was just a big bowl. This was... Uh, Kind of open out there, but it was it was an old fashioned stadium. I, I mean, I don't know what year it was built, but it was uh, it was definitely a, a good time. I had been there uh, one or two other times down to Baltimore to a game, and uh, nothing as important as that game. But anyway, yeah, I'm shocked you got tickets for twenty five bucks a day off. Yeah, you got to lean a little bit to the right, but eh, who cares? Uh, why do you why do you think that you cost the Phillies World Series just because you showed up in Baltimore that day and then they they lost? 
yeah, from there on out. It's my luck. No matter whatever I went to, any big game that I ever went to, usually um, most of the time, even when I went to a Phillies home game, they lost. Um, when I had season tickets years later, if I had a 16 game plan and I went to the Phillies for 16 games during the season, they probably won three out of the 16. So like my luck in going to, to root for my team is usually no good. So I still say I cost the Phillies I've the always, series that year. Oh yeah, you probably did. I mean, my luck has always been exactly the opposite. Almost every professional sporting game I've ever went to or ever gone to, excuse me, our team has won, like whether it be the Phillies, the Flyers. I actually got a good story about the 2008 World Series. Uh, the Flyers were playing the Devils that night. Uh, game, what was it, game three? The What was the rainout game? Was that three or five? Yeah, I'm not sure which one it was. It was somewhere in the middle of the, of the series. I remember that. I don't remember the exact game. Well, anyway, we got t uh, cheap tickets to go sit up in the nosebleeds. I mean, if you're watching hockey, you can sit up you know, with your back against the, against the stadium, I've hit my head on the top of uh, Wells Fargo center plenty of times. And uh, I just remember that night after the game being over, it was, it was pouring out when we got out of Wells Fargo and I look over and everybody is just dumping out in the thousands from uh, citizens bank park. And I'm like, Oh, I guess, uh, I guess they called the game for the night. And I have no idea how we made it out there. It took us an hour to get to the bridge, but then, you know, lo and behold, the Phillies ended up winning that, World Series that year and won that game in, in grand fashion with that Jeff Jenkins home run and it was it was pretty cool. So basically, I'm I'm the exact opposite of you. All your luck went to me when I was born. So that was uh that's pretty neat that I have that took that from you. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Yeah, I uh, I had season <laughs> tickets back then and I went to the to the '93. The only game big game that I ever saw the Phillies win was uh, in '93 when they played the Braves in the NLCS. I was at the deciding game that sent the Phillies to the World Series against Toronto. And then I had one game, uh, I had tickets for one game against Toronto in Philadelphia. And of course, Philadelphia lost that game also. So I had a chance to, to go to another yep. game in Philadelphia and I said, there's no way in hell I'm going to this game. I'm staying home. So they <laughs> uh, they took it deep into the series and uh, wound up losing it on Mitch Williams, giving up the home run to, to Carter. So but they probably would have lost it a lot sooner if I'd have went to that other game in Philadelphia. Yeah, it probably would have been a four-game sweep, and Mitch Williams would never have been uh, talked about the way he is now. He probably wouldn't have never been in that situation if you went to, to one of those games. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Like, if, if it wasn't for bad luck back then, I wouldn't have had any luck. And that night going down to Baltimore, I was psyched. I couldn't believe I had tickets to the World Series. It was the first time that I had, had been to a championship game. After that, I had, like I said, I went to the – to uh, Sixers and uh, and I went to uh, the Flyers when they played uh, Edmonton. And so yeah, they played against Gretzky. I was at that, that game at that series. And I don't know. That's still it still eats at my crawl. Eighty three. I still say I cost. It. <laughs> that sounds about right. I mean, it, it's not as bad as ninety three for me anyway. Since I kind of grew up a split fan, being uh, you know Orioles in the AL and then the Phillies in the NL. So it's kind of like all right, whatever. You know, one of my teams lost the other one. That's no big deal. And then. To, to have Phillies lose in 93, I don't remember it because I was only probably, what, maybe just turning two. I, I was no. not even two yet when that yeah, World Series was played. Yeah, so, I mean, that wasn't a big deal. But then, you know, in 2009, that was that was kind of a big deal. That would have been nice to, to have back-to-back. -back. But, yeah, I'll take one in my lifetime. That's that's good enough for me. Same with the Eagles. I, we won a Super Bowl in my lifetime. I'm, I'm happy with that. Well, then again, if you remember, Bill, you were with me at the one game when uh, my bad luck struck again. Uh, I was doing the photography at the time, and me and you, I brought you with me uh, to a Phillies-Mets game. It was a day game. I think it was like in August. I remember it being real hot. And the, and the Phillies uh, were losing against the Mets, and they were losing pretty good. And you had a baseball game that day. So we wound up uh, yep. leaving a little early to go to your baseball game. I said, come on, Bill, we'll just go early and get to your baseball game, and you can relax a little bit in the air conditioning and in the car because you've been sitting out in the heat all day, and you had a game that night. So as I remember as we're leaving the stadium and just about the time we got on top of the Walt Whitman Bridge, what happens? Here they come. Here come the Phillies. Now they're coming back. We left, or I should say I left. And uh, they're coming back. And uh, by the time we got to your field uh, over in Glassboro, uh, the Phillies had won the game against the Mets and then they beat them pretty good. And that was like a deciding game because it was real tight that year with the Mets and Phillies uh, coming down to the end uh, who was going to win the division. But of course, you know, the luck struck again that night. I said, let's get out of here. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
mean, it's, if the shoe fits, uh, I remember that night vividly and, and coming back and listening to the game being called uh, by Harry Kay in, in the car on the way to the game and uh, telling my teammates, yeah, I was at the Phillies game. He's like, oh, did you see him come back and win? I'm like, no, nah, we left early because they were getting blown out and heard it on the on the radio on the way in here tonight. And they're like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's our luck. So, yeah. yeah, you live and you learn. Yeah, I remember we were hooting and hollering the whole way in the car over to your game. We had about a, what, about a 25-minute drive to get to get to where your game was yeah it, it wasn't far away at all and then yeah listening to it going over the Walt Whitman and then here they come and then oh man having a game that night too that's I think that's kind of what drove us to leave a little bit early so we could get there and, and set up and I could warm up and stuff but uh, I'll, I'll call it that it was it was my fault not yours that we had to leave early that night but oh well it was cool to to at least be a part of that game yeah well we could have wound up staying a little later but uh I just figured it was they were losing. It wasn't looking good. I figured we'd just get out of here and beat the traffic so we wouldn't be late to your game. We should have stayed. You should have been late to your game. Yeah, I probably should have been late to that game. I've only been a, a part of a couple comebacks. Uh, the most vivid one was Easter Sunday one year. I was at, at a Flyers game, and they played Washington. And uh, I remember they pulled the goalie. I was with my buddy. They pulled the goalie with, like, a minute left. We were down by, by one. And I'm like, oh, that – almost never works. I'm like, we've been having offensive pressure the whole game and let's just keep the goal in that way. You know, we don't get a dump and lose. And lo and behold, they score with three seconds left, send it in the overtime. And then they beat the capitals in overtime. When I tell you, I jumped up so high, my head hit the ceiling in the Wells Fargo center. And, uh, I almost blacked out from it because it was that crazy of a game. And, uh, yeah, it's probably the, the biggest comeback in Philly sports history anyway I've ever been at. But a, a Philly's game would have been cool to be there and watch that comeback because they were down a lot, like a lot of runs going into like the seventh inning. So, yeah, yeah I know, we, uh, we left earlier. Well. a little off here talking about the, the other sports, but uh, I had the same thing. Though, I like I said, I was at that game when they beat Edmonton. I was in, in the old uh, Spectrum Stadium. And uh, I was in the last row with a, with a bunch of my friends. I think there was like four or five of us. We were in the last row of the stadium, like right between the uh, the blue line and the uh, and the goal and the one goal. And uh, the Flyers were losing. John Leclerc scores the goal, and right after that, J.J. Daniel gets a penalty. He goes into the penalty box. Now it's getting down close to the end of the game, and we're starting to squirm up there. And the place was already loud because you know when Leclerc scored his goal, it never really calmed down. And this was all within a few seconds. And then uh, Daniel comes out of the box, and somehow the puck gets kicked out to the blue line. And just as the, he get, crosses the blue line, he shoots it, and he scores. Well, we jumped up, and like all four or five of us hit our heads in the roof. We're screaming and hollering. All, like I said, almost knocked ourselves out. <laughs> it, it was just crazy. But I was there to see that victory. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I've, I've only seen replays of that series. uh but yeah, it was that was a great sports memory in Philly. That's for sure. All right, we're gonna move on a little bit here and get off my sore spot. What else you got, Bill? Uh, I know you said you were watching the uh, the players uh, doing the MLB show games. Uh, was that today or yesterday? You were talking about you were watching that. Uh, they play pretty much every day, but I was kind of watching the the highlights yesterday from from the past week, and you know, Bo Bichette was playing a little bit beneath his level and he got blown out a little bit. Hunter Pence has been making a comeback uh, for the Giants and Joey Gallo clinched a playoff spot. So did Blake Snell. And it's actually getting pretty interesting. Um, the NL East looks a little different from how it would normally look in baseball. You know, like the Mets are in second and uh, the Phillies are second to last, which actually kind of fit from last year. But yeah, yeah it's it's a whole different ball game when you're talking about, you know, a video game and individual players playing like Joey Gallo. I think he's only got like three or four losses out of like 24 or 25 games. It's, it's kind of insane. He's putting up big numbers and it's actually really cool to watch and see their reactions. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. is still cranking home runs with his own player and like jumping out of his skin. It's, it's really cool to watch and uh, see him when they actually have him live on uh, the MLB channel. And they have uh, one of their correspondents in there actually like kind of commentating on the game and talking to both players simultaneously it's, it's really neat to see them talk smack and go back and forth, and they don't know how to pitch one another because they know exactly what the other one's going to throw and when they're going to throw it. So it's it's pretty cool. Now, when's that supposed to end? How, how much longer is that going to go on? Uh, the playoffs are, are coming up 
fairly shortly. It's it's obviously a shortened season. I don't know if that's because they didn't know how long this thing was going to go or they were going to try to, you know, possibly make another season with different players representing their teams. But it's it's only got a couple weeks left. Like I said, playoff spots have already been clinched. So uh, it's going to last a couple more weeks at least. And uh, the playoffs are actually going to be a lot bigger, I think, than people realize. And for, at any given time, there's like two or 3,000 people watching each one of the players. So it's it's actually becoming really popular uh, because there's no baseball to watch. I, I know I played MLB The Show yesterday for like six hours because I just needed my fix. But, uh, yeah, I finally got my guy. He's playing left field for the Mariners and hitting like 68 home runs a season. But that's beside the point. Kind of have that rigged a little bit just for fun. But, uh, yeah, we got a couple weeks left here on the MLB Players uh, League on the show. And it's, it's looking like it's going to be a good playoff picture. Um, there's a couple guys that – I know right now won't make it for sure. Like Reese Hoskins, he's on the bubble, and Hunter Pence is kind of on the bubble. He's making a comeback too, but I guess we'll see how it goes. It's it's been pretty cool to watch. Yeah, I was uh, going to try and catch it today. I saw that Bichette was playing at Tatis, and uh, the one pitcher for uh, Milwaukee is it Fader or Hater? The the guy with the long hair, uh, Hater, Josh yeah. Hater. Yeah. I think he was supposed to play uh, Bichette, and I wanted to to watch that today, and I was in the middle of. Uh, editing their video for our other channel all day today. So I never got a chance right. to switch over and check it out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. If you go on MLB's website, they actually have the full standings and the schedule and everything like that. And and you can see exactly where to watch your favorite player on their live stream. Most of them stream on Twitch. I don't think any stream on Mixer, but you can actually click the link under your player. If, if you know they have a game there, and it'll bring you right up to their live stream and you can you can probably ask them a couple questions before they get into actually playing the game, and most of them are pretty good at answering. I was watching Reese Hoskins, I think, last week, and uh, before the game even started, he was waiting for it to get going. He was answering some of the fans' questions in the chat, and uh, it was pretty cool, you know, like, well, what was it like uh, getting tossed out of your first big league game? And he, you know, he answered that, and what was it like hitting your first home run, and what were you feeling, and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool to see, you know, his, like, candid opinion on it, not having a person from ESPN or MLB.com in his face and with a microphone and he was just sitting in his bedroom talking to people you know it was, it was pretty cool so we're I guess the players are staying out of trouble on the the MLB side uh, not like that was over on the uh, the NASCAR side oh yeah they're they're pretty good I mean you'll hear a couple of slip-ups now and again but it's nothing it's nothing bad like that uh you hear the s word and a couple other choice words out of them but uh it's it's been pretty PG-13 for the most part. Well, that's good. Yeah, I'll have to uh, check it out. Like I said, I keep forgetting every day to, to go look, and uh, I remember it when they're all done. You know, go figure. So have you heard anything uh, as far as uh, what they're looking at or any plans, baseball? I tried scouring around the Internet today. I haven't been able to find anything new. Uh, the, the last that's uh, still out there is they were looking at maybe at the three locations like we were t talked about before, Arizona, Florida, as well as Texas. And I haven't heard any more. So yeah, that's all I've heard too, is Arizona, Florida going with a spring training type of approach to this shortened season. Uh, I think they're doing a good job or a better job, I should say, of keeping this thing under wraps because they don't want rumors flying. And then people like blowing them up because they hate the idea, like them, you know, playing at just Arizona. And so I think they're trying to keep this pretty close to the chest uh, before they make any final decisions. Um, I could see them playing in like Texas, Florida, and Arizona where they have like a, a lot of infrastructure with minor league stadiums and, and major league stadiums that they could play at. But uh, I mean, only time will tell, I guess. We'll, we'll have to wait this one out. The one thing that I did see, I saw that one of the executives for, uh, for the New York Yankees wasn't a big fan of uh, playing any games without fans. So who, who knows where this is going to go? I, I think what they really... You know, who knows? They're probably doing it. But what they really need to do is get a representative from each team uh, along with MLB and uh, and the Players Association and all like that. And they just need to have one big conference call and uh, try and hash things out or, you know, at least get it down. At least the, the Players Association needs to talk to, to all the players. And, you know, they need, they need to iron out which way uh, they're going to be in favor of because there's not going to be a plan that everybody's going to be happy with. There's just no way. I mean, uh, I can wow. see the player's point not wanting to be separated from their families for, you know, a long period of time. I mean, they're used to it when they go on the road, but what's what's the most they're on the road? Uh, maybe eight, nine, ten days tops, and, you know, they're back home. But, they're you know, the way they were talking about is months 
and uh, being away from their families because they got to quarantine and self-isolate and all like that and, and be tested constantly. So there's just no way everybody's going to be happy in this. Yeah, I, I mean, there's always going to be some some sore feelings and some people get a little bit butthurt over what's going on. But again, you, you just kind of have to roll with the punches with things like this. I mean, if you really want to play baseball, you're going to find a way to play. Um, that's what I've always said. And, you know, the the commissioner needs to sit down with the owners and representatives from, from each team and, and the Players Association, like you were saying, and they need to hash it out what could be the best possible outcome for this year if this quarantine remains in effect through, you know, june july august you know who knows how long this is gonna keep going on but uh, they just need to have one giant mass meeting put all their thoughts together and then they can really hash out a plan to see how we're going to do this yeah well the one good thing one of the sites that they're you know they're talking about is texas now texas i believe thursday it was announced they're going to start opening back up uh you know which is a good thing hopefully keep your fingers crossed everything goes well and you know People still need what they, you know, to do what they need to do, you know, once it does open back up. But let's hope it goes well. And uh, I guess baseball, that could be one of the things they're waiting to see how that turns out. You know, give it a week or so and and see what happens. Yeah, I think for the most part, people down here uh, in Texas aren't too keen on it because Dallas was was blown up uh, when they shut everything down. And so was Austin. They were, they were getting that way too. And uh, Houston and San Antonio, I mean, we have these major hubs with international airports, which I know that they're not going to be flying, but huge, huge cities with tons and tons of people that are going to open back up. Uh, so I, I don't know how this is going to go, but we'll see. Uh, I know for the most part around here in my County, Bell County, we're going to be kind of doing a soft opening. So all the non-essential businesses are going to open back up, but like, say for instance if you, if you want to get a haircut you got to make an appointment and come in that way there's not a bunch of people waiting around and and like uh, if you want to go out and get clothes go food shopping or whatever it's it's going to be the same place in order pick up call for an appointment to make sure you're not coming in contact with too many people when you go out but i mean we'll see how it goes all right we'll get ready to wrap this up here and the, the one uh, nice thing tonight bill have you noticed about it what was the one one thing we didn't do tonight i have no idea you're probably oh, going to surprise me one. with this answer, though. We didn't talk Dodgers. I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have uh, as long as we're talking about baseball, tonight, we're, we're no good. Dodger talk. That's fine. I'll talk about the Dodgers here and there. I mean, I know Yasiel Puig, he's not on the Dodgers anymore. He's been floating around, but they're looking at you know new homes for him. I heard teams have been in contact with him, but we'll see. And I know Clayton Kershaw's son has actually uh, got quite the arm for being a, a little guy, so we'll see how he turns out growing older i'm sure he's yeah. going to have a spot somewhere in the dodgers organization i did i did see that all right bill you want to talk about uh bill's got uh, a new idea plan for the channel here and uh he's going to be uh making some videos shortly you want to talk real quick about that bill yeah i'll give a short uh summary of what i got planned so uh my dad has just recently sent me down like a i don't want to say a, a goodie basket but yeah it's pretty much a goodie basket of uh setting me up to go out and do live instructional videos uh, from a batting cage. And I got a couple ideas. Uh, the first thing I was going to talk about, which I talked about a little bit on our live stream the other night, is I want to get into the mental aspect of the game and how to prepare your mind for practice, a game, and then how to cool your mind down because your mind is your most important tool. It's not one of the five on, that, you know, the scouts look at, but that's your most, most important tool is your mind. And then I'm going to get into, you know, the basics of hitting, different drills you can do, and, and the proper way to approach launch angle, which is a big, big issue with the younger kids nowadays. And I know A-Rod did a little video about it, but I think he left a couple key factors out of it. So I'm going to get in the cage and, and record what I got going on and uh, put it up on YouTube weekly. Well, that sounds good. Uh, anybody that has young kids or whatever, I'm sure they'll be interested in, uh, in looking at that. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with that also. And uh, yeah, like I said, uh, you should be set up uh, pretty good there for now and you know to take the videos and uh, just see how the editing is going to be the, the the part there it's going to be a little curve for you but uh, i'm sure you'll get it yeah i pick up on that stuff pretty quick uh, and i didn't want these videos to just be instructional for the players i wanted you know the parents to be able to watch them too and understand what's going on with their young player or, or in high school and college and as well as coaches too i know uh, the Army has a lot of mental resiliency training that they teach us, and it's starting to branch out in the civilian market. And I wish I knew some of this stuff when I was, you know, growing up playing ball, but I know it now, and I can incorporate, you know, how the Army thinks about things and how to keep your mind right, and I can incorporate that on the baseball field, and that's what these videos are going to be about. 
Well, that should be good. I'm looking forward to it. All right, we're going to head out of here. Uh, if you would, we'd appreciate it. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Bush League Baseball because we're going to be over here most of the time now, uh, if not the rest of the time now, rather than in uh, Dole Whip Dad's channel. We're going to try and keep everything right here on Bush League Baseball. And uh, so if you can uh, like us here on YouTube and you can follow us on Facebook, our Facebook page now has topped over 500 uh, followers. Between myself and Bill, we've been trying to put a lot over there uh, every day or at least once a day for both of us trying to put things there. And also follow us on our Instagram. We appreciate everybody uh, that's subscribed to us so far. Yeah, thanks, everybody. It's it's really cool. It's going to be a fun year, I think, for us. We're, we're going to try to get a, above 1,000 subscribers uh, before next baseball season. That's kind of our goal. And uh, I'm really looking forward to making all these videos and just talking about baseball, especially when it comes back on. We're going to have so much more to talk about. All right. And uh, we should be uh, we should be live Thursday night. We haven't talked to Jeff yet and uh, we have come up with a game plan what we're going to do. But uh, we should be live on Thursday night. And uh, if we are, we're, we're going to announce it. And uh, you'll probably see something up here on uh, on Wednesday night. So until then, we'll see you later. Take care, everybody.